bio world in the previous chapter we have discussed about the nervous system and sense organs of various organisms in a detailed way and we have seen that how they perform their functions in a well coordinated way and in a fabulous method there you might have noticed that all the physiological processes are taking place in a systematic way am i right and the most striking feature is that they are so coordinated or well coordinated in order to maintain our homeostasis what is homeostasis do you remember homeostasis is the ability to maintain relatively stable internal equilibrium despite the changes in the world outside so this is a simple illustration showing how our body maintain homeostasis for example hypothalamus helps to regulate the temperature and osmotic pressure kidney maintain water balance blood distribution heat throughout the body evaporation of water helps to regulate body temperature we simply call it as Uh, sweating so sweating is a mechanism which helps to regulate our body temperature pancreas regulates blood sugar level and skeletal muscles contract and release heat so here in this illustration clearly shows that how our internal equilibrium is maintained that is how our body maintain homeostasis so what is endocrine system it is a system which involves chemical messengers called hormones it consists of a feedback mechanism feedback mechanism means a mechanism which help to maintain homeostasis hormones are released by internal glands directly into circulatory system thereby regulating distant target organ so hormones are the chemical messengers they are produced by certain organs or glands within our body and with the help of the circulatory system the circulatory system carry these hormones to the target organs in our body which may be very distant from the gland so now let's see the function of endocrine system it regulates the metabolism as you know metabolism is the sum of all the chemical changes in a living organism so metabolism includes two types of reactions anabolism as well as catabolism i hope you remember what you have studied in 9th standard so metabolism means all the life processes it helps in growth and development it helps to maintain homeostasis it regulate the body temperature it maintain body rhythm it helps in reproduction now let's see some more details about the glands glands are of two types exocrine glands and endocrine glands exocrine glands are commonly known as ducted glands whereas endocrine glands are commonly known as ductless gland from the name itself you can guess the function to ductless means without any proper passage ducted means having a tubular structure or a pipe like structure through which they can carry to the destination so exocrine they have duct whereas endocrine 
they don't have any duct hence it is known as ductless glands it secretes its product into a duct whereas endocrine secretes its product directly into the blood stream so it is with the help of circulatory system that is with the help of blood they are carried to different destination they do not circulate all over the body exocrine they have a a uh, proper channel through which they are secreted so there is no need of circulating the exocrine products into all the parts of the body whereas endocrine since it is circulating by the blood they are circulating all over the body secreting substances such as enzymes sweat saliva and milk secreting substances like hormones control short term activity whereas endocrine glands control long term activity examples for exocrine glands are salivary glands gastric glands whereas examples for endocrine glands are thyroid gland and adrenal gland now let's see some features related to hormones hormones are actually some chemical substances they are acting as messengers which help to connect various organs and as a result the functions of body can be done in a very normal way we call that term as homeostasis so this is maintained with the help of hormones properties of hormones they are acting as a chemical messengers they regulate the cellular activities they are transported through blood hormones are generally proteins steroids and amino acids so they are made up of proteins steroids related to fatty acid and glycerol or fatty products and amino acid amino acids are simple form of proteins they are there are special receptors to receive hormone even if they transported along with the blood there are certain receptors to receive the particular hormone that's why it is known as specific in nature specific means only that particular receptors can receive the hormone elsewhere if it is transported to various parts they cannot act on the any side but they have to be received by someone or picked up by someone those are known as receptors here you can see a blood vessel which contain hormone molecules illustrated as greenish shades structures and there are certain receptors in the cell the viral structures are the receptors in the cell so when the blood transport these hormones the receptors in the particular cell picks up the hormones so it is just like a lock and key mechanism so how a lock and key mechanism works a particular lock will be opened with the help of a particular key no other key when we insert is not possible to open the lock similarly this particular receptor will be able to accept a particular type of hormone in that way they causes certain changes in the cell functioning as a result it may inhibit or stimulate the activities of the cell so here you can see the blood carrying the hormones these are the hormone molecules 
and when they come in contact with the receptors the hormone binds with the receptors in the cell membrane as a result certain changes will take place in the cell hence this is the flow chart showing hormone action hormones transported by blood bind with receptors in target cell formation of hormone receptor complex the enzymes within the cells activated and finally it causes changes in cellular activity so this is a simple flow chart to show the action of hormones when they reach the cell or how the hormone influence the activity of the cell first of all the hormones transported by the blood when they reach the target cell target cell means the destination where they have to act there the receptors receive the hormone they bind to form a hormone receptor complex and they produce certain enzyme in the cell these enzymes causes changes in cellular activity now let's see the human endocrine system in a detailed way so similar to other system we have a well defined endocrine system it is distributed on various parts of our body starting from the head region or the anterior region till the abdomen here you can see the glands the brain possesses three important endocrine glands hypothalamus pituitary gland and pineal gland all these are well placed in the brain itself hypothalamus pituitary and pineal when coming to the downward we can see a gland on the neck region that is thyroid and parathyroid gland the gland in the neck region are thyroid and parathyroid glands just below the thyroid and parathyroid in the chest region there is another gland called thymus gland in the chest region there is another gland called thymus gland moving downward another gland near the stomach that is pancreas you might have familiar with the term pancreas when you studied the portion of digestive system am i right so pancreas is the next endocrine gland below that just near the kidney there is another set of gland called adrenal glands so hypothalamus pituitary gland pineal gland thyroid parathyroid thymus pancreas adrenal glands then the last two glands based on the sexual characters females have ovary and males have testis so these are the major endocrine glands in human body apart from ovary during pregnancy the females have placenta which is acting uh, as a endocrine gland so we have to focus on these major glands in our body the endocrine system comprises hypothalamus pituitary pineal thyroid parathyroid thymus pancreas adrenal glands ovary and finally testis so all these glands will produce variety of hormones so basically the hormones are made up of different types of substances 
there may be peptide hormone that means complex protein then some are steroid hormone made up of fatty acid or lipid molecules then some are protein hormones and some are amine hormones so amines proteins peptide all are different types of amino acids based on the complexity they can be divided into different categories as peptide then protein and amine hormones example for peptide hormones are oxytocin and insulin example for steroid hormones are progesterone and testosterone example for protein hormones are growth hormones and finally examples for amine hormones are noradrenaline we will study the details of each type of hormones later so understand that so please keep in mind that there are different types of hormones based on their chemical properties so children today we discussed about the endocrine system the major glands and the hormones its properties so let me conclude here thank you